a double batch of avocado crema. We'll need three cloves of garlic, two avocados, half a cup of sour cream, a handful of cilantro, and lime juice. Cut into your avocados and hopefully they are beautiful. Let's see, three, two, one, perfect. So just scoop that out into our Ninja blender and you can definitely do this by hand if you do not have a blender. It will just be a little bit longer of a process because you want to get all the chunks out so that it's not a guacamole consistency. So just squeeze that out. All right, now that my hands are all nice and gross, I'm going to go wash them real quick. So now that my area is clean again, since we are making a double batch, I'm going to do three cloves of garlic. You technically do two, but you can't ever have too much garlic. Then we're going to add in our half cup of sour cream. You could definitely do this with low fat Greek yogurt. I'll just get that mixed all in. Our bunch of cilantro and some lime juice. You really want to do a fresh lime, but I don't have any, so the more the merrier, I guess. Not completely sure. If it doesn't completely smooth out, we will be adding a little bit of milk. So after a few minutes, it's still kind of chunky, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of milk. See, now it is a lot smoother and more at that crema stage that we would like it to be. So I think adding that milk in definitely helped it. It's more of a creamy texture. Let's go ahead and try it. That's good. It has just enough cilantro to have a little bit of bite there at the end. Oh my God, I made a double batch because you could definitely add this to some like blackened chicken or like barbacoa tacos. I'll definitely be using this for more recipes. Mango salsa. I'm going more of a untraditional route. I never made it before, so I'm kind of just throwing everything together. With our mango, you want to make sure that it has just a little bit of firmness when you press down onto it and the wrinkles around the edge. That means that it is ripe. If you have too many wrinkles and it's overripe, and the seed of the mango is right in the middle, so you're going to want to press it down on the tallest side, and then that's how we're going to be cutting it. See, now we're hitting the seed just a little bit, so I'm gonna go kind of a little further out, right there, and go down with it. Turn it to the other side and do the same exact thing. Okay, now when it comes to our cuts, we're gonna make sure that you don't go all the way through to the skin. Just get that top layer so that whenever we scoop this out, it comes into chunks. It's off and then try to get as much of the mango away from this as I can. I have just drained this mild rotel and I'm going to just be adding that in. And then this cilantro. To finish this off, we're just going to be adding some corn. I just had this corn on the cob, the frozen kind. Sheldon was nice enough to cut it up for me. <laughs> it was supposed to be Blair's on the cob, but it is fine. It is diced. And then we are just going to finish this off with some lime juice. Yeah. Yeah. So Blair is getting ready to eat her dinner of corn and mango. Add some salt. And that is finished, and we are going to get started on our fish. So it is a family affair right now in the kitchen. Sheldon is getting the flounder cut up for me, and we are going to be starting on the breading. So you're going to need one cup of Bud Light. You have to taste it first just to make sure the Bud Light is good. No, it's Bud Light. We use the good stuff. We're not sponsored, but if they want to throw it our way, we'll definitely take it. So one cup of Bud Light, one cup of flour, one teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and then the same measurements for the garlic powder. If you wanted this less spicy, you definitely could have just done one fourth teaspoon of the cayenne pepper, but we wanted to make it a little bit more spicy because we like the kick. 
The original recipe does say that it's supposed to look like pancake batter, which is starting to get that way. The beer is still just a little bit foamy, but that is not bad at all. So I think we are good to go. To another container, we're gonna add one and one fourth cup of panko breadcrumbs. I'm just using the plain Walmart great value. We're not gonna add any seasoning to this since our beer batter does have the seasoning in it. So you're just gonna take your flounder that we've cut up into finger length slices. You wanna get most of the beer batter off and then get it into your panko, get that mixed around, and then continue the process for all of your flounder. So you want to turn your heat on like a medium. I have mine at between like a three and a five. Let your oil go up to 350. If it hasn't hit 350 and you put your fish in, it's just going to take forever. And if you go over 350, you are going to burn your fish. We're going to start laying our fish away from us. Be careful to not splash upon yourself. And always make sure that you're laying away. Okay, that's good for now. You're gonna start seeing that nice golden brown around the sides. So after about a minute on each side, you're just gonna flip it over. You wanna make sure you keep an eye on your temperature. We started off at 350 and that's where we wanna stay. Once you put the flounder in, it will drop a little bit, but try to stay as close to 350 as you can. And now we are at the end. So I just warmed up our corn tortillas just a little bit on the stove top. I'm gonna do a layer of the avocado crema just to the bottom. Top it with our flounder and get some of that mango salsa. Look how pretty that looks. Everything's just been in the fridge just to get a nice chill on it. That is gonna be a good bite. So for my favorite part of this entire video, it's the eating. Let's try it out. The fish, nice and crispy. I would add a little bit more seasoning to the beer batter or even to the panko if you want more of a spice, but adding the avocado crema and the mango salsa, it makes it perfect. You get that sweetness from the mango, but that creaminess from the avocado. It's so good. If you ever get the opportunity to go out and catch your own fish, it's definitely worth it. So much better than the store-bought fish. I'd probably get kicked out of my house if I bought store-bought fish, so I'll stick to fishing. I'm gonna finish these tacos. If you wanna see another recipe that this avocado crema will be awesome on, check out my barbacoa video. I'll post it here and leave it in the description down below. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.